John Elite Show. Subscribe, hit the button. I'm at the 100,000 mark almost. Uh, just keep hitting that subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, DM me suggestions of what you want the shows to be about. Ask your questions. I like to answer questions. I answer, I engage. Uh, follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, and on my TikTok. We hit some big numbers this year on TikTok, and uh, I'd like to keep it going, everybody. And uh, let's get into it. So last week, uh, I did a couple of shows on uh, President Trump and uh, what happened with the uh, attempts on his life. And people asked me why I was so opinionated of uh, and so sure that these uh, killings were, uh, these attempted murders were uh, inside jobs. And I believe that somebody high ranking within the government is involved in giving these guys information. And I explain, these aren't intelligent guys. And when you do uh, or you try to hurt somebody or kill somebody, it takes time to get down the pattern of that person. So if the person's going to get ice cream, you know, at a certain time, he goes to breakfast at a certain time, he drives a certain car, he goes to see a girlfriend, he goes to see a friend. You try to get a schedule down pat to be able to hurt or kill that person. And to have that information, especially from a president, how would these guys that are not intelligent, they're not professionals, uh, be able to do this? This is just not some random nut that try to do it. They got in within a perimeter. So I explained this on the last show. The perimeter is only, you know, whatever it is. Let's say it's 500 yards. That's the number I've been using. And our Secret Service prior to that has dogs, has local police. They have all this situation already covered, and they check that perimeter. And they also check beyond the perimeter, but with inside the perimeter, they secure the area. So for these two shooters, want to get on the roof and want to get to a golf course uh, wooded area where supposedly paparazzi goes. Now, how would they know to go to those areas at those times first? Second, if they're within inside that perimeter, and here's the most important part, once they do get inside the perimeter, which should never happen, so you have a Secret Service reacting after something's already occurred, the danger's already there. This should never exist. This should, it, it's not even possible to happen with competent agents. But is it competent agents or is it compromised government? And that's the question. And here's how I'm going to tell you why I believe it's compromised government that are helping these individuals to try to assassinate. And my belief is going to be the 47th president. And once they're, because once they're in, within the perimeter, they're inside the perimeter, how the heck would they know to go to certain areas in that perimeter that will not be given attention or security at? So in other words, they got inside the perimeter. What would choose this guy in Butler to go up into a rooftop? How would he know that there was going to be no Secret Service up there? This is the, what, what I need to understand. How would he possibly know that? He wouldn't know that. It's impossible to know that. And to stay up there for a good 45, 50 minutes. How would he, how would he even think that, that nobody would go up there? Why didn't he choose another spot, another high top roof? Why didn't he choose another location? How would he know nobody was on that location? How would he know that that location would not be guarded? It's impossible. So this is why I said these are, these are planned somebody intentionally or unintentionally is giving that information to somebody high ranking that knows the president's movements. And he also knows the secret service location. It's, there's no other answer for that. So that's why I say when you have an open border and I discuss this and you have terrorists walking through our border and you have to have a couple hundred at this point in this country, maybe more, maybe 300, but you definitely have a couple hundred coming into this, into this country. That we know of, they said this a couple, a hundred or, or better. And, and that's coming from Border Patrol and FBI and everybody else's calculation. My calculation, and I would say you got more than, closer to two to three hundred. The problem is what happens when you have an experienced, te an experienced team coming in. Now, you know Iran, they got caught. 
right? So we know they're trying to, to, to kill the president, right? So President Trump's life's in danger. If they come with a team five, six, seven, like I said in the last video. But what's, what, what are the sanctions against a country? First off, what do they do in the United Nations, part of the United Nations? That's my f first uh, complaint. Once they sabotaged and they broke into uh, his campaign and they talked about uh, threats on his life, they should be booted out of the United Nations, not the, the chair people of the United Nations. Once they started bombing Israel and they backed the bombing of Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, the jihadists, or anybody else they're funding and, in, and instigating attacks on Israel. How are they part of the United Nations? And once you have a nation that is compromised with their bylaws and they're openly speaking about the end of uh, man, the, the mankind in Israel, they straight out say they want death to Israel or everybody to be dead. That's what they believe. This is not a hidden fact. This is what they believe. So here's my point. If you have a country and you're Israeli or you're Jewish and you're an American in this country, how are you not voting as a, a Jew after the Holocaust 80 years ago, voting for a guy, a president, Donald Trump, that will protect your country? If you don't vote for him, and this continues, because we sent, when we released $100 billion to Iran, this was money that was closed out to them, sanctions put on them, and this administration, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, released those that $100 billion. And people say, well, what's your problem with that $100 billion being released to to Iran, because without that money and without the sanctions on energy in this country, they wouldn't have the ability to make the billions of dollars they're making in the oil industry now and the money that was released. Now, doing so, that hundred billion, so people want to know, and the green big scam, I call it, a trillion dollars, that kind of money could be going to our inner cities in Detroit, in Philadelphia, in New York, in New Orleans. There should never be one ghetto in our country. There's nobody in our country should be suffering anywhere. There's so much money that they tell our inner city and our kids and, and school choice and guards in our school that there should never be a shooting or it should be protected. We should have armed guards in every school. So when I hear that we don't have money, for our country, for our homeless, for our veterans, for our children, for our uh, single moms. That's a lie. Because all you have to do is not give them that kind of money, and there's your money. There's your money for education. There's a ton of money to help with health care. And, you know, when people are, you know, they're talking about, you know, for a mom that needs to stay home after she has a child and, and for the father to be able to stay home, we have the funds. But we chose to give those funds to Ukraine and to Iran and to the green scam. The green scam's a scam until the rest of the world contributes and, and agrees to, to, to contribute into the green deal. China does it. India does it. So we don't make a difference. It's 0.004 in carbon dioxide in, this, in, in the atmosphere. It's been like that. And it's not changed in years. And so anybody that knows any difference and when you have John Kerry flying around in private, private jets and telling you that he cares about, you know, the energy, that's another scam. This is all scam. When you give a trillion dollars to have, and I just bought a battery operated car, by the way, and you can't get, you can't charge them. There's no charging stations because they didn't put them up. So where's all this money going? And when you're giving Ukraine unlimited money, unlimited for an endless war, under this administration, people ask me why I, I, I vote Donald Trump. It's like a pilot. A, you get on a plane and the pilot is the biggest asshole around. His personality sucks. His, his political stance sucks. He's arrogant. 
He's every word you could say. He's lousy to his kids. He's not a good human being, but he's an excellent pilot. I'll fly with him because he's an excellent pilot. I don't care how he talks. I don't care how he acts. I don't care what his personality is. I care that he's going to land the plane safely. Well, it's the same thing under Donald Trump. There was no wars. You don't like his personality, so what? But under Donald Trump, there was no wars. Iran was broke. There was no terrorism because he didn't give the funds to Iran to give to the Houthis, to give to Hezbollah, to give to Hamas, to, to cause havoc around the world. There wasn't a war with Ukraine and uh, Putin and Russia. So when is these wars going to end? When are these trillions of dollars going to end? I know Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, he's got $800 million in the bank. But those people are suffering in those countries. You have people suffering in Palestine. All those you know, kids are dying all over the street. But these wars shouldn't be happening. If Iran wasn't funded, these wars wouldn't be happening. So if you're an Israeli or you're a Jew here that lives in this country, they want the non-existence of your race. How can you vote any other way than Donald Trump? If you're a mom and you're 30 to 50 year olds, because that's the, the, the voting scope that seems to be voting the other way. If you're 30 to 50 years old, aren't you worried about your children's future? Aren't you worried about World War III? Aren't you worried that they're gonna be drafted into a war? There's endless wars. You have warships in the Cuban waters facing Florida. We are so close to World War III and this expanding in other countries. If you're a mom, you have to say to yourself, I'm worried about my kids. If you're a mom and you're seeing Kamala Harris talk about defund the police and she's dancing in the street to defund the police, those rich people in Martha's Vineyard, they ain't worried about nothing. There's nobody killing over there. Their kids go to private schools. They're driving around in limousines and Bentleys. But I get you, take, I'll take you to my neighbor in East New York. They don't get the uh, school choice. I don't see all these illegal immigrants that are coming in this country living in, in Taylor Swift's house since she wants to be boisterous. Move them in. You got a lot of money. Move them all in. Move 50, 100 of them and support them. But when they come into this country, I know whose jobs they're taking. They're taking all the inner city kids' jobs. They're taking all the inner city families' jobs. They're taking single mothers' jobs. And not only are they taking them, they're taxing them to pay for them, for the illegal immigrants that are coming here. They're losing their money to pay for illegal immigrants. They're losing their health care because all those extra funds that could go to our families got to support these illegal immigrants that are coming here. We all like immigration, but you got to do it the right way. When Obama was in, he deported 3 million immigrants, more than any president, actually. No one wants to talk about that. When President Clinton was in, Democrat, he increased the police force for this reason, because the only people were hurting, and this is why I, I go after Kamala Harris the way I do, because the only people you're hurting when you talk about defund the police is you're hurting the citizens of San Francisco. You're hurting the citizens of Detroit. You're not hurting the, the rich neighborhoods. I'll take you to all these rich neighborhoods. You're not hurting any of them. They all have private security. They have walls. They all have guns. They have armed security. They have everything need. It's the kids that are kids that are ones that don't have that, that are dying all over the south side of Chicago. But why, is, why are they dying in the south side of Chicago? Instead of putting a trillion into that scam, the green scam, why don't you send that trillion into Chicago? Why don't you give them everything they should get, like every other person in America should have? There's no reason that we should see any poverty in this country. But yet we see it. So you have single, you have moms that should be worried about their kids going to war. That's the first thing. Then you should worry about the economy because food costs have went up about 30%. Your kids ain't going to buy a house with inflation that where it's at. It's at the highest ever. Under Trump, it was at one and a half percent. So what do you want? Energy costs are up 37%. Gas prices, you know, when people ask me, well, gas prices, we're not fracking. So if we're not fracking and Kamala Harris was against fracking, of course, 
the gas prices are going to double. And if gas prices are double, families can't put food on the table. And when food goes higher, it's even worse. And when trucking costs, the gas, to, to, the trucking costs go up because gas prices went up, they increase every other, uh, every other thing that you got to bring in. Now you have the ports on strike. Our country is a mess under this administration. Kamala Harris has been in office for four years almost, three years, 10 months. And since then, we have wars everywhere, money being spent everywhere. We have all kinds of criminal activity going on because of fentanyl. We have kids dying 300 a day, my daughter, one of them. So I don't stop talking about fentanyl being let in this country. We have China that makes $35 billion a year off of fentanyl. And we're talking about what? Guns? Guns, it's 25,000 people die a year. And I went, went through these stats with these numbers. 10,000 of them are from suicide. 1% are from illegal guns. The illegal guns that are used in a commission of crime are coming through our borders. They're not used from legal guns that anybody's... And, and even the ones, like I said, the shootings, why don't we have police at every school? We don't have it because you say our government doesn't have the money, but I just told you where you find the money. And if you go into her... We're going to give 25000 for everybody to have homes or 5000 whatever she said, to buy homes so everybody can have a home. You're not going to be that. You're going to, you're going to have, it's, actually homes are going, to, are going to raise. The price is going to raise because there's going to be competition because you're giving those funds to illegal immigrants, 15, 20 million that came in this country. They give 12 million stat, but they're not telling you about, we have a half a million people that just came into this country that are criminals, rapists, killers. They, they release them from every jail. You have another half a million, 200,000, excuse me, that are right now fighting criminal cases. We don't even know where they're at. We have another half a million they believe are here on criminal charges, but we don't know who they are or where they are. And then you have the majority, I would say, 8 million are good people that really want to come in here and live to have the American dream. But I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. You don't just come in because the legal people that want to come in the right way can't get in now. And our funds, like I said, are going to them. When you have welfare recipients in our country that are getting a paycheck of 800 or 1,000, and then you're giving illegal immigrants Xbox, telephones, hotel rooms, who do you think those costs are, are being put on? They're putting on the back of our citizens. We're paying for it. The inner city's paying for it. All the kids that I'm talking about from the inner city are suffering, they're dying, they're, they're in gun violence because no one cares about them. If you're cutting their funds for everything I just mentioned, of course they're the ones that are going to suffer. If they're going to go for a job, they're losing their jobs because you've got illegal immigrants that are going to take their jobs. They're going to take it for less money. They're going to take it. They're, they're going to take their housing. They took over their schooling. If they don't speak our language, you have teachers that unfortunately have to attend to them and try to teach them, but they don't speak the language. These are all situations that are being caused by this government. So if you have FEMA now is at the Black Mountain, President Biden didn't show up, Kamala Harris didn't show up, you have disasters everywhere. How do you not show up for the citizens of one of the worst disasters ever and not even go and, and, and go see, supposedly they're gonna go today, finally today. Where you been? When you have Gold Star families, 13 of them is a, a, a ceremony for them. For, they lost their lives because of the disastrous pullout of Afghanistan and you don't show up for the ceremony. Kamala Harris, why not? And if you want to be president of a country, you can't be afraid to sit down and do interviews and you won't do an interview live with anybody. You won't go on Fox, you won't go on Newsmax. You only go where nobody's going to ask you a question and it's taped. And you only did that two or three times. So how are you going to sit with a president strong like, like Chi? or Putin, if you're afraid to sit with a media journalist and answer true questions, how are you gonna answer questions from, from, or sit and try to control what's going on in this world? Look what's going on. We are so close to World War III. So if you're a black citizen in this country and they insult us or insult a whole race saying you're not smart enough to get voter ID? Is that insane to even say that to somebody? How does anybody not see what, who gets the nerve to say something as ridiculous, as stupid as that? 
that they're not intelligent, a whole race is not intelligent enough to get voter ID? I mean, this is simple. I said this, France. I said, everybody in France has voter ID. It's the most liberal country around. It's the same day voting. It's paper ballots. It's done in 24 hours. This is normal. Not what they're doing in this country. It's insulting with this racist rhetoric and they're trying to say that it's not racist. It is, how can you say it's not racist? What, white people are smarter to get voter ID? Indians are smarter to get voter ID? Or Spanish, are they dumb or they can get voter ID? I mean, getting identifications, we need it for everything in this whole world. But the biggest problem is, in, in, is our economy doesn't mean anything because you have a president that says she's bringing joy, she's bringing funerals because of the open border. She went on tape and she lied. She sued Texas when they put barbed wire up. And so you can't back out of that. You sued them for putting barbed wire up, trying to stop the illegal immigrants from coming in. You sued Arizona because they put containers by the wall to try to stop them. So your stance is to let the illegal immigrants in. Your stance is to pay them the money that you should be giving to the inner cities. That's your stance. You stood by that for four years. For four years, you had the opportunity to say whatever you're saying, you're reading off of prompters, but you won't have a one-on-one -on -one interview with anybody and talk about exactly what you were going to do for this country. You haven't done it in four years. So what's going to make you start doing it now? What's going to make you stop these wars? You, you haven't did, did anything to stop these wars. You haven't sanctioned Iran. Look what they're doing. How long are they going to continue firing missiles at our, at our ships, American ships? They just fired again at all our ships, 180 or 200 missiles into Israel. So if you're, again, if you are a mother of 30 to 50 and you have a child, you're going to send them to World War III? You're going to send them to a draft? Because eventually they're going to have no choice but to draft our kids because of all these conflicts around the world. How long are we going to keep giving Ukraine money, unlimited money, instead of settling that war, so that money could go to health. Healthcare in this country is a disaster. So if you're gonna send that money, where is the trillion dollars, like I said, for the, the green scam? There is no green, there's no green initiative anywhere if every other country is not involved in it. It, it. it matters what every country does in order for that to, to even work, if it does work. And I'm not saying I agree with it, but. If the rest of the countries aren't in, and the biggest fault of them is, like I said, India and China. But our own leadership here is flying around in, in private jets. So how do we see that? How do we see the, you know, like, if you have such chaos in this country right now, we'll go through it again. Higher energy costs at 30-something percent. Food costs are up to 20 to 25 percent higher. Inflation rates are exuberant under Trump, it was one and a half percent. You have interest rates that are at about 7%. Under Trump, they were 2%. How does a young person get by in this world? How do you go buy gas for your car, put food on your table, and you have a couple of children? It's not possible. You're killing the American dream. Everybody that wants to come to this country comes here for the American dream. They didn't come here for World War III. And that's where we're heading. And if you're at that age, and if you're a young person, the first thing you should worry about is, are we going to go to war again? Am I going to be drafted into a war? If I'm a Jew, I'd be worried about the existence of my country. It's not unreasonable to, to think that, we're, that your life is at stake after everything that's gone on. If you're, a, a, again, if you're a mother and you have children, aren't you worried about their future? And if you're for my body, my choice, right? So then why is it that you will force vaccines by Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden? That's not my body, my choice. You didn't care about women then. You didn't care about if they're pregnant. And in my opinion, my only my opinion, I believe in abortions if you're raped. I believe in abortions if the mother can lose her life. And I, be, I believe in abortions just like France does at 14 weeks. But why do you need 18 weeks or 20 weeks or 25 weeks or 26 weeks to make that decision? And now those decisions are made by the state. Each state, individual state, decides on this. I know abortion's a, a, a big play in America, and it should be. 
It's Liza children that God gave the gift of life. And unfortunately, life's not perfect. And people make decisions because of a lot of reasons. But how many weeks do you need to make that decision is my question. Why would you need more than, say, 16 weeks when you have, again, France, one of the most liberal countries around that at 14 weeks, you have to make that decision. And what happens when they botch these abortions and the baby's still alive? What, do you, what are they doing with them? Are they allowed to just kill them? What's the, what's the answer? To, what, what's the answer to that? There's a lot going on in this country, and four years ago, you might not like that Donald Trump's personality when he won in 2016. But you can say anything you want about personality, like I said about a pilot. There was safety around the world. There was no wars. Nobody can deny that. There was non-existent inflation. Interest, interest rates were the lowest ever at 2%. Food costs were down the lowest ever. He signed the college and university bill for, written by Tim Scott for black and college universities for 10 years that Obama refused to sign. He had had opportunity zones in our neighborhoods. He didn't defund the police because he protected our neighborhoods. If you defund police, you can change and re-educate and retrain. I believe in that. I says, but I don't believe in defunding. You only hurt our neighborhoods. You hurt the people in our neighborhoods. When you bring illegal immigrants in, they're attacking, they're robbing. Every store now has everything locked up. You can't even go to the store. So where's the joy that I'm supposed to see from a, a woman that's running for president? And if you believe in democracy, she lied for four years and protected Joe Biden and said that he was cognitive. So if you're going to lie about something as serious as that, who's running this country right now? Joe Biden certainly isn't. So. After four years of saying Joe Biden's cognitive, after a lousy debate, he's kicked out. He's still president. So I guess he's still well enough to be president. How do we just replace him and throw in Kamala Harris? How is that democracy? She never got voted in. She was just dropped in and he was kicked out. That sounds like communism to me. That's not somebody that voted her in. When a Democratic Party had a chance during their primary race to vote her in, she had a 1% likability. She didn't, she couldn't get 1% of the Democratic vote. Why is it RFK, who is uh, a Democrat, little leaning left, uh, great guy, I think, is teaming up with Donald Trump? Tulsi Gabbard, a veteran, a Democrat, is teaming up with Donald Trump. There's a reason Elon Musk, a Democrat, is teaming up with Donald Trump. But I can tell you, as, a, as an American citizen like anybody else, I don't care about anybody's personality. I care about my pocket, about my family's pocket. And like betting a football game, my favorite team, I'll bet against them if I think another team's going to make me money because that's what life's about. My personal and my family's personal standard of living and wealth. But under Donald Trump, we had wealth. We had a good economy. We had no wars. We had safety. They could talk all the nonsense they want in the media but tell me what the problem was if we had no wars. There was no wars. He didn't arrest anybody in the Democratic Party. He didn't go after them personally. Every aspect of our lives were better. He wanted fair trade. He made China pay their rent. There is no sanctions against these countries that are, that are destroying our economy. And that's China. There should be all kinds of sanctions because they're bringing in $35 billion profit off of fentanyl that killed my daughter and killing kids every single day. Why is there any sanctions against them? Sanctions against Mexico for allowing it into their government. Why did Kamala Harris and Joe Biden erase all those executive orders to keep it remain in Mexico until you vet these illegal immigrants come into this country? They won't do it. My biggest concern, again, is World War III. And if anybody else is naive enough not to see what's going on, if you're any of these groups I just talked about, you have a big concern of how you vote for the safety of our future and our family. And that safety in our, in our families is World War III. And we are so close to it. 
just turn on the news and see how many wars are going around the world right now. And everybody has atomic weapons. And if Iran ever gets that atomic weapon, they will definitely go after Israel. And if that happens, everything's going to explode from country to country. Think about that. Vote Donald Trump. Come to the rally October 8th in front of Trump Towers, 12 o'clock. Support the 47th President Donald Trump. Knock down and realize Kamala Harris is too scared to do an interview with anybody live. What kind of president doesn't sit down and do an interview? I just, if, how is she going to deal with our adversaries? With Kim Jong or any Putin? If you're too weak to sit down with a journalist on a live interview that asks you tough questions, you're never going to be able to sit down with these strong leaders. Thank you, everybody. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on TikTok. Follow me on my Instagram. Subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everybody. And I'm voting for the convicted felon. See you guys.